I got. I'm I'm fucking solo this weekend for the first time in like a year. Giving the boys to my Damn, dad. Damn, really? Becca's going on a. She's going to see a friend in the cities all weekend. Giving my kids to my dad. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm probably, I wouldn't do anything. I'm probably gonna have analysis paralysis. But like yeah. I have too many options, so I'm just gonna sit around and like. Uh, I probably well, come golf for a couple hours. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You you guys want to get a tea time this weekend or what? Leonard's probably open. Leonard is. Oh, I was just gonna say in the sim, but I suppose. Um, yeah, we might be open. Things them. are gonna be open up outside. Swing them or because like that's it, right? Like that's the snow. We're done. Like that. Should it be has it. to be. Well, I mean, I did think that like a month ago, and then we had a blizzard last week. Ninety days. So how, how many fogs did we have after uh, the dude, ninety day from last week? I'm gonna start. Good. I'm gonna start recording the fogs Do just it. for you, Ryan. Do it because I actually think it's. I mean, it's legit. Saturday's supposed to be windy. At, 60 and windy but we still haven't debunked the whole fog and summer situation i think it's probably just a uh a thunderstorm yeah yeah it's just some sort of precipitation depending on what the mm, yeah we might as well start it at we'll start the pot at him he's solo this weekend yeah why not yeah um, yeah there's a little live editing for you yeah, yeah. welcome back Found our spot guys episode no clue guys, i don't even know what hundreds like even give Are like just 200 get yet? the first two One, numbers right well it's 180 177. No, 191. 183. Fuck. Damn, let's fucking go, boys. Yeah. We're rolling. Um, also, yeah, I feel uh, bad that we kind of cruised past 169. I don't think we said anything about yeah. that. Yeah, that was sick. Yeah, because the one throws it all off. When we get to episode four, 42, well, it would be 4,200. No, it'd be 42,069. Well, 169 is more so just like someone just laying there sleeping. What? next to it yeah yeah, yeah. 169 is king bed 169 is the cuckold of the 69 <laughs> yeah pretty much anyway on that note welcome back to the double bogey show we are presented by nicolay law ryan nicolay hey. law they pipe that the wrong way i'll call the clubhouse we'll book another 18 for tomorrow okay they cheated on that they fucked their balls yeah no better time for the breakfast ball than now <laughs> You want uh, a little extra cash in your pocket? Yeah. If you ever get hurt injury. and you need to know what the fuck's going on. Um, actually, I want to tell people, like, we're a Midwest predominant podcast. Yeah. Dominant. They're, actually, yeah. Emphasis on the dominant. Dominant. Yeah. We, we see our viewers. We see you guys in California. We see you guys in Florida. We see you guys in the Carolinas. Yeah. Yeah. I, you, might, you might have been from here. You might have family yeah. ties here. We, this, this ad read isn't for you. But everybody else, it's for you. Because Nicolay Law has offices in Green Bay, Milwaukee, Madison, La Crosse. Okay. Don't get mad at me, Wisconsinites. Wausau? Wausau. Yeah. Wausau. Wausau, Wisconsin. Yep. Wausau. I know That's, Eau Claire. Uh, former home of uh, eBay, or East Bay. Sorry. Uh, oh, really? Is that where they know that. from? Wausau, Wisconsin. Good wow. to know. Uh, Eau Claire, Hudson, Rice Lake, New Richmond, Superior. And a ton of offices in Minnesota, North Dakota. They're actually getting one in the old uh, stomping grounds, Detroit Lakes. Let's go. Sign up there. We're getting one here in yeah. Fargo. Pontoon injury. Uh, so they're all over the Midwest. So if you ever get hurt and you got a question, maybe uh, maybe it wasn't your fault you got hurt. Give them a call. They'll help you out. Maybe somebody smacks you in the fucking head with a golf ball and you don't know if they're liable. Give yeah. them a jingle. Give them a, give them maybe a jingle. The fucking, uh, maybe, the, maybe the golf cart flat, flat tire blowout. On the uh, on the cart path, and then it rolls, and you hit your head, and you you know, yeah. But only sue the golf course <laughs> if they're if they're bad people. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. If they're good people, don't sue them. Yeah, unless you're being an idiot. I actually yeah. saw on Twitter the other day a sign that said "Golfers assume all responsibility for injuries," like a sign on a golf course. That, and I was like, I don't know if that would hold up in court. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, anyone can Russ put that up. Yeah, anyone can. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe talk to Russ about that one in the future. So if you got questions, give him a jingle or check him out, Nicolaylaw.com. Just need to uh we just need to backtrack a week. So again, swing revelation. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. And we had just kind of had to do an update because we put the post out about it and it was pretty Why is it always me who has No, that? no, no, no. no I it thought was good. No, it was good. It was good. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But right away it started, you were getting ripped. I was like, oh no, I feel yeah. bad for putting this out. But then you shouldn't feel bad though, because I feel like it happens weekly. Yeah. But I was like, when it for people first started commenting, there was not a single positive one. And I felt bad because I laughed at you and everyone was ripping on you. 
And then the supporters did trickle in. So I think it is. It's pretty 50 50. Which, knowing the way the 60 40 in my favor, knowing the way the algorithm works, it went to our followers first and then everybody else who yeah. doesn't follow us. So all the bad comments first are from the listeners. <laughs> yeah. So you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, I think part of it too was um, the de- my, like my delivery of it. It couldn't have really been. It couldn't have been any better. It couldn't have been any worse because it's quite literally what it is. You take a practice swing, you step up to a ball, and then you just replicate that practice. Again, the practice swing, your practice swing is never what your real swing is. Mm-hmm. No. A lot of people in the comments were like, like, yeah, my real swing, I just feel more tight and I don't feel as loose. The practice swing is so loose. If you just trust the practice swing and quite literally do that with a ball at the face of your club. Mm-hmm. I golfed around last week and it was on auto auto fixed putt. Yes, yeah, so you get it in a circle. So yeah, depending it, it's a one it or goes, a two putt. It goes 10 and then 20. Yeah, 10 feet circle. Inside 10 is one putt. Outside 10 is a two putt. Outside of 20, you got to putt it actually. I'm pretty uh, sure. Or on the green, outside 20, it might be a three putt. Yeah, it's a three putt. Okay, so also the thing with auto fixed putt on the sim, this is, I, I couldn't believe this, but. If you're on the green, but not within the big, the big, big circle, mm-hmm. it's an automatic three putt. Yeah. So on a par three. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the 20. Outside of 20. Yeah, it so makes like you the, three the putt. big, the big ass circle that says yep. auto fix putt around it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I hit the green on a par three outside of that circle and I automatically bogeyed it. Yeah. So that's like that, It doesn't even give you a chance. So, I mean, there's like, so that hole right there, that's bogey. Um, I was five under. Oh, shit. 500 through 18 holes. And I had, I think I had three bogeys and probably like, I don't know. Well, let's do the math. Eight birdies. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Again, just sticking to the practice swing. Take a practice swing, replicate that with the ball in front of my club. And I was hitting fairways. I was hitting greens. I, I eagled. Number two was a par five. Eagled the par five. 190 out fucking stuck it right in, right in the hell yeah. nice hell yeah so oh, I, yeah. i'm not yet gonna say the proof is in the pudding because again it could just be this this one wild instance where i just played well yep um but i'm gonna continue to do it and you know see how it goes hey, every good scientist doesn't take their first experiment and call it fact yeah no 100 they have to they have to confirm they have to corroborate all evidence yeah yep. you got the scientific method going on yep and no it wasn't fucking chip and putt it was uh some course headwaters course in michigan or something it, tight fairways mm-hmm. jade played it nice um yeah so i i was i was kind of pumped about it keep playing that well i'm gonna lower your handicap for league <laughs> well we got to get that league going too by the way yeah, I don't think Probably anyone wants to play it now because it's nice outside. Yeah, that's everyone true. would rather just play golf yeah, outside. Mr. Window. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, I know it's still not for... I have terrible news to share. It's hmm. not terrible news because it's like... Whatever. Anyway, I'm the best man in a wedding that is groom supper Thursday, wedding Friday, during the Masters. Oh... Well, I mean, it's only the Friday round. That's kind of fine. But yeah, still. but the Thursday round too. Yeah, that's true. The Thursday round is and like I'm not, I'm not guest. I am best man, so I have to be there to help. Uh, and I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. So that's why it's, yeah. it's not terrible news, but it's, it's just conflicting news. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be that guy at the groom supper with his fucking phone on his lap. Man, I just put an AirPod in. Yeah, that would look bad though. What I got to be way? like sitting at the front table next to the groom. <laughs> I got an AirPod. No, in. like okay, so the groom supper that's that's just eat. That's evening. Like you'll maybe be doing some setup early on, but mm-hmm. then it's well, just... well, we got that, the rehearsal as well, and yeah, that, well, anything outside that of that. Long, yeah. You know, if you think that your your actual commitments are probably let's say three hours on Thursday. Yep, Thursday's um, good, but the tea time the they tee off at like what nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if not earlier, because which the actually period. maybe maybe this is a good thing. I'll be able to watch most of the first day because I did I took Thursday and Friday off of work. Okay, so I'll be able to watch the Masters all the way up until I'm needed to help with the wedding, which I do believe there will be some setup night before or day before. Sure. Plus, if you luck out, you know how like the what at the groom's room or whatever they yep. call it, you yep. might have a TV in there. You uh-huh. maybe just cast right to it. I am yeah, the I only sports guy. I was going to say, I don't know if any anyone else. Well, there's the, one. There's there's a college golfer that's in the groom's party. Okay. So me and him will want to watch. That's the other thing, too. If you 
if you have to watch a sporting event at a wedding, you better find somebody else to get invested with you. That way you can like go down together. Yeah. I mean, to be honest though, if the groom doesn't want to watch the masters, we will not be watching the masters. I'm not going to force it on him at his own wedding. I probably wouldn't either. I mean, it's, it's more so it's kind of like a bachelor party. It's like whatever you want to do, whatever you want to watch, whatever Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's up, it's about them. It's it's their day. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And I just, I don't want to be the shitty friend that is, the entire groom's party is hanging out, drinking beers, doing whatever before the wedding, and I'm in the corner on my phone watching the Masters. Again, throw an AP in, throw one AP yeah. in. Yeah. Um, I okay, yeah, yeah. The f- I feel like it's a huge trend with younger kids these days just to have the one AirPod in. Why? I I I, again, I hate. I, I have. I don't have AirPods. I have the little Beats. Okay. Beats version of AirPods. Sure, yeah. Same fucking thing. If I have one in, it tweaks me out. It is it is odd. I don't like um, it one bit because all all good headphones now are equalized, especially if you're watching something. Yep. It's not mono. It's all stereo. So certain things go in the right ear, certain things go in the left ear to make the sound experience more encompassing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it it sounds way off if you only have one earbud in. Just having the one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is, but you, well, you know, you're taking important business calls. You still, you still kind of, you're on the clock next Thursday. Well, Friday. you could just say you're on the clock. You maybe know? that's the move. If you're a solo and you get stuck with a threesome and you're not really vibing with the guys, maybe you just pop in one. Throw ear, an AP <laughs> in throw a Pop in an AP. <laughs> throw it's not, on it's the not really DBS. A, did I ever tell you guys the morning I tried to play with headphones in? Uh-uh. I think you might have, but I, I, I forgot. It's been a while. Yeah, I hated it. Really? Not a fan of the headphones in on the course. I was solo around one morning. Um, Osgood got out real early, had the headphones in. I played half a hole with them in. I'm like, this sucks. So then I just had it on a speaker Had the Apple watch would pause whatever I was listening to during the shot. Cause I did, I was listening to a podcast. Mm. Mm-hmm. Don't blow your show. No, okay. don't, don't listen to my own podcasts. You should. I mean, it is a good podcast. You should. Listen. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I hear enough <laughs> of our voices during the week, especially when editing clips. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit! You I, hear I get my voice way too much. I get sick of us real fast. Between Ryan singing all the time, and it's one thing to live it, but then to have to re-listen to the same yeah. thing yeah. over and over. It's good once. It's good. Yeah. First time's great. I will say the golf course is one place you should never have headphones or AirPods in. See, and I think that's that would be a hot take in the golf world because I think people fucking love it. I don't. I'm with you 100. Yeah, it's I, distracting and it feels awkward. Well, so also you, I mean, and this this is it's probably just obvious to a lot of people, but you're not allowed to wear like you're not allowed to listen to anything during like a legit golf competition. Mm-hmm. Like at Pine to Palm, you can't have headphones in because there's something with the rhythm like the rhythm of a song could like help you in the rhythm of your golf swing oh really so it can like create an an extra advantage for somebody that's why you can't have headphones on when you run races either because you can use it to pace yourself you you know the the length of a song you know how far like a college track meet or something like that even marathons i don't think you're allowed to have oh yeah you are like fargo yeah for sure really oh yeah and it still counts oh yeah huh yeah I, I wore headphones during the half marathon mm. okay. years ago, uh, I, but, but it, like college, like, like sanctioned yeah. sporting events here. I don't, I don't know if you'd be allowed. To. I was, I've I, never I, seen any guy where I'm at. So yeah. we had a, I don't know if this is a good story or a really bad story. We, so I was a sprinter and a thrower. So I threw disc and I ran sprints in high school, high school track. And we have one meet a year where the coach is like, your events don't matter. You guys can do whatever you want. You can be okay. in whatever event you want to. And so I signed up for the mile. Fuck yeah. Nice. And I ran, I wanted to run the 200 still because it was my best race. So I still ran the 200. I ran the 200 and I got second, ran a really good time. And the next race after that is the mile. So then I run the mile and these guys are kicking my oh, yeah. ass. Oh yeah. And I realize. So I, I'm four laps around the track, right? I'm on the second, like the third lap and people are running with me and cheering me on. I'm like, what is going on here? This is weird. And I get to the final lap. I had been lapped by the guys that got first and second already at this point. Damn. And they were still running? No, they finished. Oh, they okay, lapped okay, me. Okay, so okay. I'm, on, I'm on the last hundred meters of the final lap and the crowd stands up and cheers for me. <laughs> They thought I was handicapped. Oh, because of the kids running with me, and I was that I was so far behind. And I, my coach came up to me like, 
on the third lap or something like when i rounded a corner he's like if you're gonna run this race run it seriously because i was being shithead about it like i wasn't running hard i was being, right after the 200 yeah yep. what are you gonna do and i crossed the finish line just dead last right and the people are like didn't you just run the 200 really well i was like yeah that was me and then i realized why everyone was standing and cheering and i felt super bad because oh. i wasn't wearing distance spikes i was just wearing my regular tennis shoes and uh then i almost got dq'd because people ran with me oh and yeah. you're not allowed to use a person to help you pace damn they had That's like, a little fucking, they had like it, yeah it was super embarrassing and i was like ah oh, damn i'm sorry coach because well, usually i should have like out. if you trip or something like that you know someone falls during the race yep. and you know they're uh, usually yeah. a, i just ran it to be a shithead and i was like i'm not gonna run this hard i don't give a fuck about the mile yeah. i just did it because like, i think a friend dared me to or something you didn't damn. have to do like a senior mile or anything no. like that yeah no it was it was embarrassing, but the whole I almost got DQ'd because that made me reminded me of it. Okay. So um you, you, you not there was no handicap there. And maybe should have um, had headphones in. Yeah, maybe should have <laughs> yeah, had should, headphones in. I would have been better if I got DQ'd and that time would have been stricken from the record and it would have been like it never happened. Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, sorry, back I just think like you're out on the golf course to just enjoy nature. There's something about being out in nature where if you have other like impeding sounds, mm -hmm. you can't enjoy it as much. Yeah. Um, so going, especially a solo round, like talk about, talk about the ultimate Zen place. Mm -hmm. You can't have fucking Lil Wayne blast in your ears while you're trying to hear <laughs> the birds chirp and the ducks quack and the geese honk. Yeah. You it know, would... and, and the sound of the ball off the club too. That's like, I mean, that's, that's also therapeutic in itself. That is true. Um, I can't wait for some golf guru that thinks that they're like the sage of golf. Tell us to listen to nature sounds in our headphones. I golfing. was going to just say like, <laughs> if I'm playing at like Mapleton where you got to play right along the interstate, like that okay, might be a hold fair. to pop in an AP but, and listen to uh, and get a hold of whatever soundtrack they're using at Augusta. Just if, uh, pump yeah, that through true. the AirPods. If I met somebody that was playing nature sounds in their headphones at a golf course, I would throw their AirPods in the pond. Yeah, I would love to. I, like people who do wear them, I would love to hear what's in there. Like, are they listening to an audio book? Maybe like it's the only time that they have to listen to like their favorite podcast or or something like that. But again, I think just putting that on the speaker on low volume so when you're in the cart you know if you're playing solo especially you're going to drive the cart up right next to your ball mm -hmm. yeah you're not going to be able to hear it um but yeah i can honestly tell you i will never play solo with a cart i'm walking every time oh, i'm shit. alone it is therapeutic yeah sometimes i i well the one time i did i honestly wanted to just see how fast i could do it of how fast i could play 18 holes yeah because i had the second tee time of the day and had i not gotten held up by the group in front of me on a couple holes i think i could have played 18 holes in like an hour and a half that would have been sweet set a record because again i i get my distance i know my club um i hit my shot and i, I move to the next yeah. one there's no questions of like hey you know it, like should i take a mulligan of course i'm gonna take a mulligan i don't need to ask anybody <laughs> am i gonna go look for that first ball no yeah I'm second ball's great drop it right here it's it's yeah there's just something about it yeah i'm with that so um speaking of things that's a terrible in segment. general speaking of speaking things, of things in, general, in general oh we got to do our final episodes full swing mm -hmm. jake and i were talking before this i think you're gonna be very surprised i was extremely underwhelmed i was like at the end of it i remember at the end of season one i was like holy shit there i can't wait for there to be a season two what the was what two, was the end of season one again I don't remember specifically, <laughs> but I just remember being uh, really the end excited. Of season, the end of season one was the live dramas, like Brooks teasing that he's going to the live. Like the, it just all came to a crest. It's like the live was announced. Players started moving over to it. And then Brooks, who was one of the main characters of season one. So the reporter asked him like, what do you think about going to the live? And he's like, well, I don't know. Oh yeah. I okay. guess we'll yep. see. Yep. Yeah, it kind of left you the cliffhanger. Yep. Whereas season two just left you with the winner of the Ryder Cup. Yeah, and honestly, the Ryder Cup, I thought that it didn't give me any inside drama that we didn't already know. Yeah, it also sucked that I kind of knew the ending of it already, too. Like, we, kn we knew how last year's, like, season one shook out. We knew how it was all going to end because we'd all watched it unfold. And so that's the same thing with season two. But season one gave us so much more extra that we didn't know. That I think that's why it was way better than season two. Do you think it's because Liv was so fresh and like you didn't know what was going to happen next? Like, but we you did. needed a season two because you didn't know that, you know, 
John Rahm was going to leave for Live or all these other players or the merger or anything like that. Like I, but we were already like six months removed from everything that happened in season one when we watched it. So we knew we knew Brooks was going to go to the yeah. Live. Yeah. yeah. And it was also kind of like a, like they were not necessarily doing a cliffhanger of what's going to happen, but it was a cliffhanger of how are we going to cover the next yeah, six exactly. months. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Whereas yep. like now I feel like it's like Ryder Cup period. Well, I felt like, like there was kind of a period at the end. It's of like it. we got more info on Brooks's decision to go to the live in season one. We didn't get any extra info. The, old, the coolest thing I thought the whole season two gave us was the decision making process of creating the teams. When it got to the yes, run, yes, that was sure. that was the truest inside look behind the scenes of how things happened last year that I had no clue about. I knew Keegan Bradley didn't get picked, but I didn't know all of the drama behind yep. it and that he really wanted to get in. Like, I didn't realize that he was playing so much better than JT. Like all that stuff. That's the stuff I want, and we didn't get a ton of it. Like, I was disappointed of uh, once. Like once we saw that Keegan Bradley got the phone call, said that he wasn't going to be on the Ryder Cup team. There was nothing after that. Well, they did show one scene of him still cheering on. Yeah, it, it was just the one scene. Though. Yeah. There yeah. was not, there was like no, it didn't really, did it even get like his thoughts like right after the call? A little bit. It just his yeah. kid hugging him, clearly distraught and disappointed and upset. But no like sit down interview of like, how are you feeling? No. Nope. That, that's what I was kind of bummed out about. Because that was a big, I mean, that was a big storyline. Yeah. And I know that it's like, I mean, obviously it's the timing of when they filmed it and when they had to release it. But if I were to go back and redo all of this whole season or whatever, Keegan Bradley not making the Ryder Cup team would have been episode one or episode two for me. Yeah. And then show what happens to him after that. Right. So like the big climax of the entire season was what I would have chosen to be my point of conflict at the beginning of the story. Yeah. You know, I just, yeah, I felt like it was kind of like, that's the end of it. Okay. Have fun. Yeah. You, you guys read into it a lot more than I, I just, I was just, I mean, the season as a whole up until episode six, I, I, it was fine. I enjoyed it. Four and five were the best episodes or the, not the best episodes, the most interesting um, I liked seeing Joel Damon, um, but the Ryder Cup was, I think, the biggest letdown. Because I what thought, more do for, you, what, what, sorry, what? Okay, what more yeah, did you want from it? I thought for sure they would dive in more to the drama that happened on the te- or on the the green with Joe Baklava. Joe Lacava. Lacava. Baklava. Baklava. <laughs> That's the thing you put on your face. Um, and then the altercation in the parking lot, and we just got nothing extra on it. We got a little bit of like John Rom mic'd up, or not John Rom. Shane Lowry mic'd up yep. in that altercation. But really, there was just no expanding on it whatsoever. Was We got like the the golf writers to talk about it, but none of the... Like, like you wanted to hear what was said? I wanted to hear what Rory's thoughts were on it. Like, yeah, yeah, I got mixed up. I, I got pissed at the wrong caddy in the parking lot because it was JT caddy that he barked at in the parking lot, which is the wrong one. No, it was the correct one. No, it was a different caddy he yelled at in the parking lot than the one that was being a shithead on the. Nope. Yeah, it was. No, nope, it wasn't. Look it up. No, nope. it's Joe Lacava had his hat. He had a, he's a big bald headed guy. Yeah, and he, he was the head. one that was being a shithead on the green. And then Rory barked at the wrong guy in the parking lot. It was somebody else's caddy. Yeah. Nope. Yep. Jake, we need confirmation on this. I'm positive. I, it's me too. <laughs> so, Jake, Jake, you are. Yeah, this is deciding vote here. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to get it right now. Um Joe LaCava, Saturday's fiery evening. Um no, it was the right one. Yeah, it's Cantley's caddy. Yep, Joe LaCava cel- is Cantley's caddy. Who's celebrating wildly in the middle of the green, much to the displeasure and anger of McElroy, who still had a putt to tie the match. Yeah, and then in the parking lot. In the parking the- lot, it's also a bald headed guy. Because he doesn't have a hat. Oh, and he confronted Bones yeah, in the parking Bones lot. So it was the wrong lot. one. See? So he confronted. Yeah, he, he got confused. He was he, he yelled at the wrong guy. He was yelling at Bones, which is disrespectful, with his wife standing a foot from him, saying that words that shouldn't be said. Now, on, now I'm on Rory's side, too, because I love Rory. But when you're something and you want to fight, you're going to say things. Is that disrespectful? Yeah, it seems like he got the wrong guy on accident. Yeah. Um, I'm going to even see if Bones and LaCava look similar at 
all <laughs> to, to the, each other. They both look like caddies. Yeah, they both. Yeah, they're both bald caddies. So okay, Jim's bone, bone Jim Bones McKay. Why was he yelling at him? I don't know. I think he said something to him, and then I think he met. He think I'm pretty sure he thought it was Laclava. Yeah. How do you just mix that up? You see these guys every week. Heat of the moment. Rory is fucking fired up. Okay, well, that doesn't make any sense to me. Then. Right. That's what I wanted him to go in on, and they didn't. I was like, I want to know, like, did Rory feel shitty that he yelled at the wrong guy? Like, what did that guy think? He was just probably just made a comment to Rory. Also, I wanted Weird. to go. Like, they did one tiny little clip of Ricky talking about conceding the putt. I wanted more on that too. Like I wanted other people's opinions. Like I knew that what, was a wild putt to concede, dude. And I know it was huge drama, like after the Ryder Cup is over. But people, I think now have forgotten about that, and that it, that brought it back to light. That was insane to just give someone a putt to was, win the entire. Ryder it was like Cup. a five footer, and they've missed those putts before. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm, maybe like, five I, might be a little exaggeration. Three, three at the shortest. And I get it. The percentage of making that putt is probably like 89, 90% mm-hmm. for those guys. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't matter because it's it's the moment that they're in well, like that Fle- is the deciding factor. And Fleetwood is a great golfer. Don't get me wrong. But it's not like he's known as being like Mr. Iceman, ice in my veins. Yeah, he's, he's really not. He hasn't won in a long time. Right. Or like, he's maybe won once over the course of however many years. So he hasn't really been in those pressure moments yeah. lately. Yeah, and it's not like he's got the reputation that Scotty Scheffler does for making every putt he needs to make. Right. right? Like, he's a great golfer. Don't get me Scottie wrong. Scotty Scheffler is actually a dog. He was a dog shit putter before he changed his putter. Yes. Uh, but that man is on a fucking tear right yeah, now. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Scotty cannot be stopped. He is the but real fear, the fear the beard. For Forget sure. Forget James Harden. Well, Scotty grew a beard and he became unstoppable. Okay, got you. Here's your answer, boys. Me, figured it out. Let's go. Okay. I'm, again, I'm getting more into the details than the show than, did. Than the show did. Yeah. Okay. So McElroy and um, LaCava was on the green celebrating mm-hmm. and waving his hat Which, to the crowd. Watching whilst- that on full swing. Laclava was stood there way too fucking long. He's being a jackass. Yep, for yeah, sure. Absolutely. For sure. I am not on his side. And Shane Lauer, like, I, I think he's Irish. Is he Irish? I don't know what he is. Regardless, he's a, he's an Englishman, and he'll throw hands. He's the <laughs> yeah. guy, like, in a bar that has a couple too many beers and will fight anybody. Yep. Yeah, I absolutely. Like. So, Lacava waving his hat, totally in the wrong. Apparently, after that hole, because it was on the 18th, Rory told him, a few words and then that was it right then on the way home back to the hotel bones heard about the whole situation and came to Lacava's side was on the same side as Lacava okay. because they were conversing about it rory and bones were conversing about what had happened okay. on the 18th mm. and then obviously rory was still upset about it and so then obviously those two got into a little bit of a barking match with each other interesting which so, would have been good to know yeah i was still confused like he's not yelling at the caddy that did it He's yeah. yelling at a different guy. Why? Yeah. I never, because they, Bones and LaCava look similar. They do. They're yeah. Both, ball, both have bald heads. Yep. Correct. Both balds, both, you know, of average stature, you know, whatever. Interesting. So that's why, yeah, it's a little confusing. But yeah, that's exactly why it happened like that. It Am is. I an idiot for not knowing that? I don't think so. I think, I mean, they look similar enough. Okay. I just right. I I knew that when it happened that it was, was the Kava in the parking lot. Mm-mm. The Kava had already you know gone. He would just wasn't there. I guess uh, is all I know. But yeah, Bones was there, and then they started talking about the situation. And I'm assuming Bones said something to the realm of, "Hey, it wasn't that big of a deal. Calm down." Also, I would have liked a little more. I mean, I would have liked some opinions on P- Cantlay's hat situation because it all we got there was, was plenty of them. Yeah, we, we just got people explaining the situation. Sure. No one was like, I think Cantley is full of shit. I think he's not wearing the hat to protest. Or, yeah, he's probably telling the truth about the hat not fitting. No mm-hmm. one shared their opinion. They just kept explaining the situation. Like, I get yeah. the situation. Yeah. You don't need to keep telling me yeah. that he's... Yeah. But also, like, he, he's he got to be smart enough to know that, like, you don't need to get paid to play in the Ryder Cup. It's like... That's just, it, like it's, it's you're doing it for your country. It's yeah. USA versus Europe. I mean, 
what do you need? You need an extra couple million dollars. You're already probably got fucking 40 in the bank. Well, mm-hmm. in a way, it is the like Olympics of golf, yeah, right? right? Because besides the, the golfing that they do at the Olympics. Besides that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Ryder Cup is the more important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I just think but it's like, smarter to think like, okay, why? Like, that's just how it's always been. Yeah. And Olympic athletes to, had been going without pay for. Cantley's a, a shithead, time. but I kind of like him now. I'm I'm coming around on Cantley. I wish that's, I could hear him talk more. He just doesn't. He never talk. He, I don't feel like I ever hear him talking. So like yeah. everyone, like we, I shit on him real hard for the pace of play stuff. You did. Yep. And As you should have. Watching the, watching full swing kind of made me like Cantley because he just doesn't give a shit. He's, I think he's doing shit on purpose to stir people up. And it's kind of fun to watch. I mean, he's got to be with the whole hat. Thing. I mean, it, it worked for me. He thing. got me fired up. And I don't give a shit about Patrick Cantlay. Yeah. And now I do. The U.S., they were like, they were kind of the, they were the villains. At, oh, at for this sure. Last Ryder Cup. Yeah. The Cantlay and then like Justin Thomas in like in uh, kind of just to combat the whole situation, didn't wear a hat. And then the whole waving the hats on the green and like chirping <laughs> the crowd, like all this kind of stuff was they were for sure the villains and it was kind of, it's kind of like the dream team what was it the was it the 89 olympic team sure yeah whatever the dream team uh, was yeah. the olympic basketball team can you look up that year yep. it's going to bug me um but i mean the 92. us 92 the us clearly had the better team statistically mm-hmm. and got pumped yeah uh, but again home turf all that they, they haven't won in europe for what 30 years 30 years the drought continues so i think the next one's at beth page beth page black in yep, new york, new york yep. yeah and so. then it goes back to somewhere in europe and then it is at home at hazeltine minneapolis I know, we're gonna have to try and get that four one years yeah six years from now that's gonna be sweet yeah um okay yeah i mean I, I i'm with you guys on your take of it season one better I, I just, again, I, I don't read into it enough to have those opinions until they're laid out for me. I'm like, okay, well, that kind of makes sense. I just, the, I, my, I just, I get caught up in the moment of like, fuck this, like that was, that season was great. I thought it was great overall because I don't look into it enough into the the finer details of like the old, not, not getting the over explanation that you want or, or anything and like that. And would I, am I overall satisfied with the season? Yeah. I would love for there yeah. to be a season three of Full Swing. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yep. I did, I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. So this is the best way I can describe it. Season one was a steak dinner with garlic, mashed potatoes, and asparagus. <gasps> season two was a steak dinner with a steak. Yeah. And ke- that, maybe some ketchup on the side. No. Yeah. It was just, I didn't get any of those extras yeah. that season one gave us. So I felt myself wanting more. Yeah. And yeah, I, it's not that me and Tyler are being, I don't know, nitpicky about it, but we just know that there's, there was way more potential mm-hmm. in this thing that mm-hmm. was left untouched. So, yeah. yeah. Sorry. With all this caddy talk, um, would you guys watch, would you guys watch one event per year where the caddies are playing in the tournament? And like, yes, it, it can be the players caddying for the caddies. Or the caddies can just have their own caddy. But I think just to see the skill set of these caddies mm. and how they actually do perform, like like Gino is a pretty fucking good golfer. I know he played, I can't remember what turn or like what course it was after what tournament, but he played the course after the tournament was over last year and he shot like an 85, I think. Wow. Uh, um, why can't I think of the name of the father son or the the family tournament? PNC. PNC. Yeah. I would watch a PNC type tournament where the, where player, it's the player, player and caddy player and caddy. yeah that's yep. what That'd I was going to say that would be sweet well because you like, I don't think I would I don't I wouldn't watch a caddies, caddies only. only yeah yeah I feel like caddies now are starting to get their own personalities mm-hmm. a little bit um I just don't know enough of them I know like four caddies yeah you know yep so I couldn't get interested in watching just these caddies playing it'd be like watching. I don't know, a corn fairy tour where I don't know anybody. Sure. You know? But if the player's with them, then you you, yes. you definitely recognize them. Yep. And they can play together. Like maybe they hire a third, a third person to be their caddy for the day, or they just carry their own clubs or they get a cart. I yeah. don't know. Uh, yeah, but that, I would, that would be fucking sweet. Yeah, that would. Just random thought. Yeah. I mean, the, the most popular group would be Gino and Joel for, for sure. sure. Yeah. Talk about, I mean, vibes, guys, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would for sure. In a that. match setting, like mm-hmm. that would yep. be just killer. Yep. Or like, I mean, they could just do it at a practice round before a big tournament. They always have the Thursday or the yeah. practice round beforehand. Like, 
why, why don't not they, just have the practice round be caddy's play too it would be kind of fun if uh like the masters does the par three tournament or the mm-hmm. par three tournament before yep. the master starts if they did a, a caddy golfer match play tournament or best ball tournament or something yeah I do it like the Valero too. You could do like a yeah, like a yeah, yeah. Just do the copy two, the Valero. Just make it yeah. players and caddies, two person match play, uh, bracket style. Bracket styles get anyone hard, mm-hmm. especially me. Yeah, I mean NCAA. Like you, you could know nothing about basketball and you're filling a bracket out. Yep. Yeah. So we'll take the most boring tournament out there of the year, the Valspar or some shit like that. Yeah. So well, most- yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then uh, yeah, we'll just do that. Switch that around. That'd be sweet. I'd watch it. We need to. We need to resort more to that than the match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The match is getting overplayed. Match is played out. It's got to be something different. Yeah. Yep. All okay. right. Let's take a break. Quick break. We're gonna come back with. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you guys a little history lesson in this Ooh. next segment. And I don't think you're ready for it because I've learned a lot. I'll leave it at that. All right, guys, like I said before the break, I got a little history lesson for Tyler, Jake. We are history buffs. You do. I know, I am we, too. Yep. Uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Uh, declared secondary education history teacher major. That's you. First wow. Semester, first semester, actually the, f- the first semester of the first semester at college. So half mm-hmm. the first semester. <laughs> yeah. I'm a declared history enjoyer. I just love yeah. okay. you know that. Yeah, um, that I, I actually quit teaching school to be a history teacher. I was fully in you doing. You quit teaching school? Yeah, I was a full education degree. Oh, I was gonna going em- to be emphasis his- in history and yeah. did a practicum and hated every second of it. So I quit. I just, uh, I didn't think that they would rent the TV on the TV stand out to me as many days as I would want it. <laughs> you uh, can only watch 300 so many times. Yeah, let alone have to get up in front of a class and speak five days a week. Yeah, to I just, shitheads I, that don't want to be there. I could not, I could not. I can lock myself in my office now and not have to talk to anybody if I want to. Yeah. Much better. Mm-hmm. But I also, I give props to the teachers out there because the fact that you guys can do that is very impressive. Um, all right, so we're going to go through... Uh, one, two, three. We're going to go through six golf term meanings and the origins of each of them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Little uh, etymology. And this was originally just going to be a history lesson, but us being the over competitive humans that we are, I've turned it into a game of Jake versus me history golf edition. Okay. We'll see how close you guys can get. Because again, it, it, some of these go deep. Okay. So Jake, rock, paper, scissors, because we're not going to do a buzzer situation on shoot. For who gets to answer the first question first, and then we'll alternate from there. And if the first person gets it wrong, they have a chance to steal. Okay. All right. Ready? On shoot. Ready? Yep. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Gotcha. Jake's got paper the first one. Paper to scissors. Jake I wins. I got scissors. Yes. Okay. We're going to start off with the overarching, uh, the overarching explanation of why are there 18 holes on a golf course? Okay. I think I know this one. My guess is because... Um, in like Scotland or something like that, wherever golf was invented, Scotland, that there were 18 shots in a bottle of whiskey and then you were supposed to take 18 drinks throughout 18 holes. Am I correct on that? Can I, can I try a steal for a more accurate answer? Okay. There are 18 shots in a bottle of scotch. Well, scotch whiskey, Tyler. Okay, and let me pre- preface all this by the these explanations are coming from the USGA website. Okay. So I, I have to take it for what it is. I've heard both of, I've heard those explanations before. Shit, we're wrong. Oh, You're both yeah. wrong. It yeah. doesn't, it has nothing to do with whiskey. Okay. Um, which I thought it was cooler that it was, that it originated with the whiskey thing. Mm-hmm. I wanted to keep thinking that. However, my mind has now switched. Um, okay, why are there 18 holes in golf? The links at St. Andrews occupy a narrow strip of land along the sea. As early as the 15th century, golfers at St. Andrews established a customary route through the un- undulating terrain, playing to holes whose locations were dictated by topography. The course that emerged featured 11 holes laid out end to end from the clubhouse to the far end of the property. One played the ho- uh, One of the players played the holes out turn around and play the holes in for a total of 22 holes. Mm. In 1764, several of the holes were deemed too short and were therefore combined. The number was thereby reduced from 11 to 9 so that a complete round of the links comprised 18 holes. Interesting. So I'm assuming there's 11 holes and 
you know, shorter par threes, more par threes than there should have been. So they said, all right, condense these into par fours or par fives, shrink it down by two holes. And that's how the 18 holes was originated mm. at St. Andrews. Interesting. Also, you have a flag from St. Andrews 18 right behind you, signed by John Daly. Yep. Yeah, it could have been St. Andrews 22. Yeah. Had this not been implemented, that's true. Yeah, yeah we could have we could have been saying, "Hey, I'll meet you at the twenty third hole." <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. so this, MJ, yeah. this might be a stupid question, and I probably know this. Is St. Andrews the first course ever? Yeah, I think. Well, not maybe not the first course ever, but it's definitely the oldest. I know course. it's the oldest course, but is it the first one ever made? That I do not know. Good thing I have a computer right here. St. Andrews is in Scotland, correct? Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Because um, I know. They have the Scottish Open, and then the next weekend they have the Open. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I didn't know. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean that's it. That's the it is the first and oldest golf course in the world. Obviously, wow. I'm sure it's changed ever since. Um, yeah, you know, it's changed a shit. I guess I just I knew it was really old. I just didn't think it was the first golf course ever. Yeah, and it 1764 is when it was changed from the 22 holes to 18 holes. 1764 was before we declared independence. Yeah. That's a long fucking... In the grand scheme, it's not that long ago. Yep. But to, in our lifetime, that is a long time. That is a long time. Very long time. <laughs> Extremely. Uh, 250... It's the oldest, years oldest old? modern sport, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it was established in... Well, officially the area was established in 1552, right? Yeah. Holy shit. Cool. Okay. Fun Probably facts. Probably not what you guys thought. No. I think I the, like the 18 shots of whiskey thing. That's way cooler. Better. Yeah. Let's rewrite the history books. What okay. Do you think? Yeah. Okay. Let's just submit that to USGA. Like I'm it's a Wikipedia. I'm sure if we get enough signatures, in which I'm sure there would be a lot of Scotch drinkers out there that would sign, especially ones that like to golf. Signatures go a long way in today's world. They do. They do. God, get anything the, on a ballot. That the, the, the actual answer is so much more boring than the Scotch. Big time. Yeah. It's like, why did they say this needs to be shrunk down into more? Like, like why did you have to combine? They got too good. Holes? And they're like, ah, we need to challenge ourselves more. Make the holes longer. Yeah. Be interested to see, like, what the clubs look like. Well, we're still then, arguing over the same shitty. thing these days. Trying to elongate true. the hole. Yeah. True. That's true. Uh, okay. 18 holes in golf. There you go. Um, all right. Let's do, uh, what is the origin of the popular golf game called Skins? the origin of skins well it was uh two buddies they were hanging out one of them was a hack but he could pull a good hole out of his ass every once in a while and he wanted a way to compete with his better golfing friend and i nailed that <laughs> or is it the origin of the term i'm i'm gonna guess the origin of the term comes from the phrase no skin off my back. And so, <laughs> That's actually a good answer. So, Not, neither are correct. <laughs> Damn it. Um, and this doesn't really give an overarching like answer, really. Just kind of like where the term is derived from. Um, but uh, as a format of golf gambling, skins has been around for decades, but really only became popular after the creation of the skins game in the 1980s. In other parts of the country, skins is also known as cats, scats with a C, scats with a k or syndicates of these syndicates seem to be the oldest term going back to at least the 1950s and possibly earlier it has been suggested that skins scats etc are simply shortened simplified versions of the term syndicates how do you get skins out of syndicates i don't know Skindicates? But I wanted to know, like, why, okay, what, like, why they, like, who invented the game Skins or, yeah, and why, why did they invent uh, it? His yes. name was Johnny, Johnny Skins. Yeah, fucking, <laughs> yeah, the Sinister's father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Johnny, yeah, yeah, Johnny, Johnny Skins would be a, it'd be a great, Syndicates. That'd be a great just, alter ego. It just makes no sense. Like, the game should just be called Points. To be completely it really honest. should. I mean, yeah. Yeah. to overcomplicate. And, and a lot of these terms are kind of overcomplicated. Like why they named it that, I don't know. Like, okay, match play should be called points. Yes. Um, and then you could have, I don't know what you, maybe you just call it skins. I don't know. 
No, I'm with you. I'm like with match you. play doesn't make sense. Just call it points. Well, match hole- play makes sense because you follow the same thing as tennis match. So like you would play mm. until right. Like I win a hole, you win a hole is the same thing as winning like a singular game of tennis, and then you play a tennis match, which is like five different games, and then you win and or you play until you have x amount of games won. Yeah. Yeah, so that's but every that hole is worth from, a I point. Think. It should just be called points. That's true. Well, and for for someone to adopt a name like that and then for it to spread across the entire golf world and go from syndicate to skins. Like why? Like how? I mean, it was derived back in the 1980s, like 1950s, 1980s, whatever. Yeah. That, I mean, that's not that long ago. No. Yeah. So how like how do you come up with 1950s syndicate? It could have been maybe the mob started. Gang it. related is yeah. yeah what I'm thinking. Yeah, but yeah. for that, it's kind of like um, I don't know, like fucking uh, like fake packing a chew can with your fingers, like that's <laughs> someone some person did that for the first time and it spread across every middle school in the entire world yeah, or the stussy s yes with the three lines yeah it's it, to me that's insane how shit can spread so fast and so far you have enjoyed anthropology fuck that was a class i had oh, to take when i was going to be a teacher history teacher yeah. yeah okay yeah um skins there you go okay now we'll go i mean very very common golf terms how did the terms birdie and eagle come into golf you got honors jake birdie and eagle um i am going to say because the ball flies in the air and so do birds <laughs> wrong okay that's a good guess but that's a good guess i mean yeah it's it, right in line um it's like what what happened for this to originate and i don't know <laughs> you won't get it because um they were using, <laughs> oh, good. like they were using terms back then that we don't use now they were saying well i know why eagle is better than birdie <laughs> they just go by size of bird yeah but then albatross albatrosses are huge so are eagles yeah but uh, i would say that albatrosses are smaller than eagles That's i watched uh um adventures in golf the hawaii one that just came out and they were trying to find an albatross like on the course by the water and i want to say eagles are probably bigger no they're definitely bigger you might be thinking about pelican pelicans are a big the wingspan i'm not thinking of pelican the wingspan of the large great albatross are the largest of any bird okay wingspan well 11 foot wingspan that's crazy 11 11 foot 11.2 11 11 foot six let me let me give you let me give you. There um, are a, there's a smaller breed of albatross, the Laysan albatross, whose wingspan is only six and a half feet, but that's still pretty big. That's pretty big. Okay, let me give you let me give you the the breakdown. Okay, how did the how did the terms birdie and eagle come into golf? The term birdie originated in the U.S. in 1899. H. B. Martin's Fifty Years of American Golf contains an account of a foursomes match played at the Atlantic City Country Club. One of the players, A.B. Smith, relates, uh, my ball came to rest within six inches of the cup. I said, that was a bird of a shot. I suggest that when one of us plays a hole in one under par, he receives double compensation. The other two agreed, and we began right away, just as soon as the next one came to to call it a birdie. In 19th century American slag, Slang bird referred to anyone or anything excellent or wonderful. Mm. <clears throat> now, by analogy with birdie, the term eagle soon thereafter became common to refer to a score one better than a bird. Also, by analogy, the term albatross became common to refer to a double eagle. Hmm. So you named your dog because some dudes uh, <laughs> had, a bird, had, a, a, had a bird of a shot. Bird of a shot. That was a bird of a shot. I suggest that when one of us plays a hole in under par, in one under par, he receives double compensation. I shall name my dog this. <laughs> <laughs> I shall name my dog this 124 years later. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We should have been doing Scottish accents. That was a bird of a shot. That was a bird. Yeah, we're Six gonna, inches from the cup. That's a hell. I mean, that is a hell of a shot. We're going O for here, Jake. For yeah, sure. we are. Yeah, Absolutely. You guys, you guys for sure. Got nothing. 
Okay, you're not going to get this one either. Uh, <laughs> what is the origin of the word bogey? Jake, you're first. Um, okay, I, I absolutely have this one. I do um, have a Because guess. a bird is something great and birds fly, right? Something that's bad that flies is an enemy plane, which is also called a bogey. And so that's a bogey of a shot is the opposite of a, that's a bird of a shot. So there you go. That's okay. my brain. My guess. My guess. I know this from Harry Potter. Hogwarts is in Scotland and they call boogers bogeys. And if you go over par, it's like a booger of a shot instead of a bird of a shot. That I mean, OK, I can I can get on board with that. Um, is it right? It's. I don't think you're. You're not exactly right. Even but, if Tyler gets a half a point, that's winning. <laughs> yeah. But you're close. I'll, I'll say you're close, Tyler. Okay, so a little bit longer of a paragraph, but I think there's good context in all of it. Um, the term bogey comes from a song that was popular in the British Isles in the early 1890s called "The Bogeyman." B O G E Y. I don't think it's called the Boogeyman. Okay. Later known as the Colonial, the Colonel. C O L O N E L Colonel Colonel the Colonel Boogie March. The character of the song was an elusive figure who hid in the shadows. I'm the I'm the bogeyman. Catch me if you can. That which makes me think thinks it's boogeyman. Yeah, they could just call it something different. Okay, golfers in Scotland and England equated the quest for the elusive bogeyman with the quest for the elusive perfect score. By the mid to late 1890s, the term bogey score referred to the ideal score a good player could be expected to make <clears throat> on a hole under perfect conditions. It also came to be used to describe stroke play tournaments. Hence, in early rule books, we find a section detailing the regulations for bogey competitions. It was only in the late 1900s slash early 1910s that the concept of par started to emerge. This being the designated number of strokes a scratch player, not, not a good player, as what with what as was with bogey, but a scratch player could be expected to take on a hole in ideal conditions. In this way, par was distinguished from, from bogey, and the term par itself is a standard term in sports handicapping where it simply means level or even. Hell yeah. And I just did so, a little more research and Tyler's halfway right. Yeah. Uh, that, Bogeyman yeah. became Boogerman in the United States because of yeah. European immigrants. So are we, are we, and are, that's are the we same boogies or bogies? It's both. It's, it's a boogie. <laughs> did Harry Potter just help me get half a it point was, it, in it, a golf Like tribute? I said, it, you were close. I it, I mean, obviously. It, You're the judge. Yeah. You have to award points. Uh, the I'll bogeyman yeah. called the booger man. Uh, booger being an American English equivalent of the British English bogey. So there you go, Tyler. I'll give you a half a point for that. Thanks, Harry and Ron. Yeah, I'll give you half. They got troll bogeys on his wand. That I mean, shout out to you because that I mean, that that's not an easy it's not easy to decipher that one. I mean, thank you. Uh, besides that, the biggest thing I took away from that is that bogey golf is good golfers. Yes. Official in the official golf history, bogey golfers are good. <clears throat> and that's why that's why it had it had um, distinguished good golfers playing the, the mm -hmm. bogey under ideal conditions versus the scratch golfers playing where then par was originated under ideal conditions. So to all of you hardos out there that think being scratch is just good. You're wrong. Shooting 90 is good. Moving the and goal being scratch is great. Yeah. Being scratch is great. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, but you if can, you're trying you to just be a good golfer, all you got to do is shoot 90. Kind of interesting. Very. I always wondered where the term bogey came from. There it is. Then I wonder why we call enemy planes bogeys. You know, then I wonder why that I didn't know came that. about. Yeah, like uh, bogeys, bogeys inbound Top Gun, yep. right? Don't they call them bogeys okay. in Top Gun, too? Mm -hmm. All right, last one, and then we'll wrap it up. Mulligan. <laughs> Where did the term mulligan originate from? Okay, I'm first. I'm going to just guess. Now, okay, before you go into it, there are there are three different like story accounts as to where this originated. No one for sure knows which one it is. Okay. So my best guess is going to be there was some guy whose last name was Mulligan that did the first Mulligan. That's correct. Okay. My guess is if you get 
to take do a shot over you get to do it again and you get to mull over the shot again so you get to mull figure it, it out you get to mull again yeah you get to mull again yeah you get to mull it over again yeah i mean that, that that's that, I mean, well no that, that's, that's a way more creative answer no that that's kind of right that's kind of right and you guys i mean you guys are going to be story no, okay I'll, we'll go one two three story number three you guys are you'll love it okay um okay the story most widely accepted for the origin of the term bogey focuses on a gentleman named david mulligan who played at the St. Lambert Country Club in Montreal, Canada during the 1920s. There are several versions of the David Mulligan story. This is story number one. Davey. Mr. Mulligan was a hotelier, hotelier, hotelier. Mm -hmm. in the first half of the century, a part owner and manager of the Biltmore Hotel in New York City, as well as several large Canadian hotels. One story says that the first Mulligan was, in, was an impulsive sort of event, that one day Mulligan hit a very long drive off the first tee just not straight and acting on impulse reteed and hit again. His partners found it all amusing and decided that the shot Mulligan, that, that the shot that Mulligan himself called a correction shot deserved a better name. So they called it a Mulligan. Mm. Okay, good. Okay. Story number two, Mulligan play. And this, this all has, still has to deal with David Mulligan. Um, Mulligan played regularly with a group of friends at St. Lambert, and in the morning he drove to pick up his golfing buddies. The road into the club was reportedly bumpy and windy and just sort of generally poor with bridge and bumpy railroad ties. An extra shot was allocated to Mulligan, the driver of the car on the first tee, because he was jumpy and shaking from the difficult drive. So like, hey, Retee and, and hit another one. That drive had to have you in fucking shambles once that was over. So, so that was I the first ever breakfast bowl. First tee. That's true. Just wait. You just wait. Okay. I think that that, that story is kind of dumb. Um, I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, that one. You can't, get that that you can't get that shaken up by just driving down. I mean, I mean, old cars are pretty rickety. And but can, I, Canada way. is known for having some very shitty gravel roads or just roads in general. Yeah, but. Okay. Story number three. Boys, this is a good one. <laughs> this story again identified a specific moment citing a day when David Mulligan showed up late to the course, having scrambled to get out of bed late uh. and get dressed and get on the course on time. He was frazzled on the first tee, hit a poor shot and reteed. That's the first ever breakfast ball. That right there is the origination of the breakfast ball. So his name's David Mulligan, sir. I tip my cap to you. Hats off to Davey. Did you ever, do you think David was sitting there on the first tee hitting that second shot thinking one day in the future, people will be able to record their voices and put it out on this thing that the whole world can consume and they'll name their show and no after one will, me. And no one will even know where the breakfast ball originated from back in the early 1900s until now. What? What is there's needs to be something that we can accidentally invent invent on the course. I know I will say that that points game um, based off the par of the hole. That's mm -hmm. how much your bet. I, I think that's a phenomenal game. Yeah, I don't remember it. Did we ever? So you take you take uh, so you take uh, the yardage of a hole um, and you call it decimal points. Oh yeah yeah yeah. And you put a decimal anywhere in like say it's a four hundred yard say it's a four hundred and fifty two yard par four. You can put the decimal point after the four. So that's four dollars and fifty two cents that you're playing for on that hole. You can put it after the five, forty five dollars and twenty cents you're playing, or you can play for four hundred and fifty two dollars on that hole. Um, I believe we came up with that game. I think when we posted it, everyone was like, This game exists. Fuck. Okay. So yeah, that's that's but we where... just didn't come up with a cool enough name for it. Clearly, we yeah. gotta come up with something like Syndicate. So that we I know. get, it's you know, some old school bullshit name. Oh, no, I haven't seen anyone. Yeah, just, I, people would put a bunch of name suggestions. Um, so, yeah, David Mulligan. There's three different story accounts of where that term originated. I'm going to go with the third one. Woke up late, scrambled to get out of bed, get to the first tee. Wasn't warmed up, hit a shitty shot. Let's re tee a breakfast ball. So Let's hit again and have ourselves a day. If we take all three of those, I was right. Because mm -hmm. all three of those is just a guy named Mulligan. Mm -hmm. Let's go, dude. Yeah. Nice, Tyler. Clean sweep. One and a half points. Nice. 
Okay. We would have never gotten the rest of those. Never in God a million no. years. But it kind of a nice little history lesson for you all, was, um, especially was, for the listener. I mean, I, I had no idea that I, I if you would ask me these questions, zero for five, zero for six, however many there were. You would have guessed there. one. I maybe got, I yeah. maybe got lucky. So you guys pull up, whip that out on the course next time you're trying to impress somebody. Next time you're doing business on yeah. the links. Yeah, you go going golfing with your boss. Say, hey, you know, first mulligan derived from my boy Davey. Yeah, except don't. Don't do the actual reason golf is 18 holes. Do this bottle of whiskey thing. That's way, way cooler. Better. Way cooler. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure that spreads like wildfire. Yeah. Okay. I got to go. Okay. Um, that's it for the episode. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the history lesson. Be back next week. Love you all. Love you. Hey, you fight that the wrong f- way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book another 18 for tomorrow. <laughs> okay. They cheated on that. They fucked their balls. Yeah. No better time for the breakfast ball than now. Ha, ha, ha.